Hi, my name is Tammy Harrity, and I'm a Recreation Leader 3 at Simpson Recreation Center with Philadelphia Parks and Recreation. Welcome to Parks and Rec at Home. As we all continue to stay home and slow down the spread, we're streaming some of your favorite Parks and Rec programs. Today, we are going to make an explosion book. As you open it up, it kind of explodes. And it's like a little scrapbook, which is what we're gonna work on today. This would be a good project for children 10 and up if they're working by themselves. If it's for a child younger than that, you, they could do it with an adult, maybe an, a parent or a grandparent. So these are the supplies that you would need. Um, a pair of scissors, glue, and you could use regular glue. Glue stick kind of works the best, I think. A five inch square of cardboard, um, needs to be a heavier cardboard. I use the sh a shoe box. Um, if you use thinner cardboard, you need to glue two pieces together for each one. A seven inch um, square of paper. You could use wrapping paper, a paper bag, newspaper, magazine, or just regular paper. Um, a piece of string about 28 to 30 inches long. Um, three eight inch squares of thinner cardboard or cardstock. I used um, boxes from um, cereal and also from crackers because I figured those are things we have around the house. And then you also need 10 three and a half inch squares. Um, you're going to use um, markers, crayons, pencils, depending on how you want to decorate it. And you can also use photos, um, pictures from newspapers, magazines, wrapping paper, anything you want. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your two five inch pieces of cardboard and your seven inch pieces of paper. Now you're gonna wrap the paper around the cardboard. So you're gonna cut the corners and you don't wanna go all the way to the edge. You want a little tiny bit of clearance there. Okay, now you lay it down and you use your glue. So you're gonna put glue here. This is heavier paper, so I'm gonna add some extra glue to it. Fold it up and just continue going around the whole way. And you wanna to try to fit it as tight as possible. And then you're taking your next piece. I usually try to work on a surface that's not gonna get um, harmed. And then you're gonna take your string, and you're gonna fold it in the middle, put a little dab of glue here, because that's gonna hold it while you glue everything together. Okay, now you're gonna place, put these two aside for a couple minutes. Now you're gonna take your three um, pieces of um, cardstock, which are about eight inches, and you're gonna fold them three different ways. So the first fold, you're going from edge to edge, And a good crease. Like I said, you can also do this with cardstock, which folds a little tiny bit easier. Let's, okay, go back and forth a couple of times. And then you're going to fold it the other way. Okay, now the tricky one. You're gonna do it diagonally. So you're gonna do from end to end, hold it on the end, and then kind of work your way back. The idea is to do it perfectly diagonal, so, but you can trim it back a little bit if you need to. And you're gonna go back and forth, folding it a couple of times. Now do the next one. So you fold it back and forth a couple of times. Just try to keep creasing it. Okay, so we have our three diagonals done. You're going to set them up diagonally and you want the diagonal lines facing towards you. And you see how you have squares. Oops, this one. So you want the four plain squares going across. All right, 
Now, what you're gonna do is you're putting these two in the back and this one in the front. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this one here and this one here. And glue on this square. And then you're gonna line it up as evenly as possible. You don't want it to be on the creases, you want it to be inside the square. So now, this is what it's gonna look like, okay? So now, you're gonna take your, your um, three and a half inch squares and you're gonna place them across. You're gonna separate four. So I'm gonna do these two in the middle and these two on the outside. And then the other six um, squares you're gonna turn into triangles. So what I, a lot of times I'll do is I'll cut one of the squares in half and make myself a pattern so that I can use pieces of scrap paper. One of the colors I like is the, um, the blue that's on the water department bill. So I can use the triangles going across, cut them out, and then I can use them on my project. And sometimes it's easier to fit in a triangle than it is a square. And then you're gonna lay them out in any kind of a pattern that you want. It's kind of better to lay them out first rather than glue as you go along. That way you have a little bit of control if you know you end up with the same colors next to each other or something like that. So now, if it's the way you want it, then you start gluing them on. And you can do any color you want here. Now, depending on what the kind of paper you have in the back, the idea is that you want it to show like little bits of the, um, the background because it makes it a little bit more interesting. All right, so now I have all my pieces glued on. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it for the first time and you're gonna kind of pull this side, fold it in. And sometimes you gotta adjust a little bit and this side you're gonna fold in. And then the middle part, you fold under and under. And after you do this a couple of times, it becomes a lot easier. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your covers on now. So you're gonna put a whole bunch of glue helps to flip it over a little bit because then you can see how much is on each end. You know, cover this one and you want to make sure that like the front and the back line up and then put some pressure on it. Usually it counts about 10 but then that actually helps you fold it in and out and that's your explosion book. So now you can decorate it. Um, if I was doing one for my grandson, I'd be putting some pictures. If you're using photos, make sure you check with an adult. So now you can finish doing your decorations. But this is what my final project looked like. Cup or a teacup, some herbal tea, my husband, um, our dog's name, um, quiet music, lots of different things that have special meaning for me when I need some calming time. I've heard of people using these as baby shower gifts, as wedding gifts for, you know, or maybe for a friend that they're missing. This would be a great thing for maybe an older neighbor or something like that. As a mom and a grandma, I've learned that things that are homemade tend to have a little bit more special meaning. Right. So thank you for tuning in to Parks and Rec at Home. If you enjoyed this video, um, leave us a comment or um, share to your profile so that we can join it or so others can join in. Remember to follow us at Phila Park and Rec and visit www.phila.gov slash parks and recreation to learn more about how the department is serving communities. Most important, stay at home and stay safe. Thank you.